is the music industry a really great place to be a mom in? I was like, ah, yet again, I'm going to have to walk a path that has not been well trodden. We have a powerhouse, someone who I've listened to, I mean, I want to say this until I, but since I was like 16 years old, so this is quite exciting for me. Um, hello. Aluna, hello. <laughs> <Yeah>. Welcome. <laughs> That was just a little intro, um, but I, I feel like we were saying we'd love you to actually introduce yourself and kind of tell us about yourself, who you are, where you are, and uh, yeah. All right, so I'm a Luna, formerly of a Luna George, now solo artist, and I, yeah, I'm a full-time music artist and a full-time mum, and um, I did live in England for my formative years. Um, for the last uh, six, seven years, I've been in LA and um, yeah, I have a few extra strings to my bow at this point. I have a record label and an events company and I have been pretty vocal about my kind of advocacy work in um, in general since 2020. So I'm new to it, but I think I've got quite a motor mouth, so I've said quite a lot of things already. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> um, so do you want to tell us a little bit about your family? Because this, obviously this podcast is all about motherhood and parenthood and yeah, do you want to tell us about your daughter? Yeah, so my daughter's four and um, she's, she's, she's great, she's healthy, so that's a bonus you know um sometimes our kids have need more, more help <laughs> that's my dog that's your kid i'm sorry <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my bitch <laughs> yes sorry. oh my god people without children often ask about the um relation to like pets and i'm like absolutely <laughs> there's a cor- correlation uh you know <laughs> I mean, I feel like animals are a full on commitment. That's why I don't have any. Um, And there's lots of compounds. You know, I went to a pet store. I went to a pet store the other day and I was like, wait, all of these toys are the same things that I bought for my child when she was a baby. There's, and they just have different wrappers on. Literally. And they're all extremely overpriced as well. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. I know. I got got given like a, a, a radish. (laughs) <laughs> um, which I was like, this is a dog toy, but it's not. It's a teaver for It must all be in just one factory. Win. Like, just send them one toy. It's yeah. nice to the dogs. Yes. <laughs> Funny enough, I feel like people always say you should maybe get an animal before you have a baby. But I'm like, animals don't, like, change. Like, children grow. I actually grow, think the opposite. You know? like, yeah, the, you should get animals it. No, oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, not about really? that. But, like, I feel like people should get an animal, like, five years into having a kid when – you know the kid can like take it for a walk and like yes. they're independent and because we had Bibba when she was I mean we've had her for like four years now and Jeannie's only two and a half so yeah it's <laughs> it's been a lot this is what this podcast is for though I feel like it's for speaking to people like yourself who have gone through it and who are thriving within their careers and from what I read you did have those moments where you were like okay I think this is it I'm this is my career done now like I'm having a baby so we're just having a baby that's it so could you talk us through the early days of your pregnancy if you're comfortable to and talk to us about that the switch in that decision that that mental thought you know the switch and you going actually no I can still continue in this journey and in my career whilst alongside See, you being say whilst a as well a parent have you ever noticed Americans going absolutely crazy when you say whilst? <laughs> Try it over here. <laughs> really? No. Oh my God. See it again. What do they want to hear? Well, whilst <laughs> I was pregnant. Um, <laughs> yes. I was really worried about um, how my team was going to react because I'm thinking I'm not going to be able to be delivering 
in the same way. And that's going to make their job less, am I going to be less profitable, Um, you know, um, and how do people, you know, you kind of start seeing yourself in ways that other people haven't said that they see you. So um, I didn't tell people for a while because I was just worried about it. And then when I did, I was saying it in a kind of like, sorry, goodbye. (laughs) And and then my team were the people who changed my mind about it. My, it was really my tour manager, Jen, and my manager, MK, Mike, um, who were like, oh, that's great. Okay, cool. I was like, oh, not the reaction so I was good. expecting. <laughs> like, no, 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 but there's going to be like, um, it's going to be different. <laughs> like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, cool. We'll just work with however it changes. I'm like, oh, um, okay. I thought that somehow the world would find out and they'd be like, ew, she's a mum now. <laughs> I don't like her music anymore. <laughs> it just gives me this like feeling of, I just, I can't dance anymore. I just, I just can't stop thinking about the, the fact that she's a mum now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what association I had with parenting. Really? Uh, but yeah, that was, that was where I was at. I don't think it lasted very long. Honestly, it was probably within the, it was definitely within the first trimester. Um, But I didn't, with things like that, um, if you take a leap of faith, sometimes people can say the right thing to you. Um, When I was pregnant the first time, I was very careful about who I told. I didn't tell anybody except for my one friend and in the hopes that she would say some of the right things. And she did. She was like, to be honest with you, I just don't want you to have a baby and regret the fact that you don't have a career because this was at the very beginning of my career. When I say the very beginning, I mean, we weren't in uh, Aluna George. We weren't even in the the band before that. I don't know what I was doing, but I was like thinking about it. She was like, I just don't want you to Mm. hold uh, hold Mm. it against your, your child and I you know, assessed everything and was like, I'm going to exercise my right to choose. And this isn't the right time. I don't, I can't pay my rent. Mm. I don't have a job. I don't have a career. Me and the person I'm with are not going to be together. Um, So there's like literally no boxes ticked here. Mm. Um, Yeah. And then Mm. this time round, I had a lot of boxes ticked. I had a career was, you know, Yes, I was considering going solo, but that's different. Like you, um, I I was paying my rent. I was paying everyone's rent. Um, I was with somebody that I could I can see myself being with for the foreseeable, and so the only thing that wasn't ticked was, um, is the music industry a really great place to be a mom in? That was really it. I was like. Ah, yet again, Mm. I'm going to have to walk a path that has not been well trodden. Not that other people haven't done this, but when I looked around, this was only four years Mm. ago, uh, five years ago, I guess, because pregnancy, um, I was not seeing, I was not seeing other peers like doing this and having done it myself, I see maybe why, because I haven't broadcast it. And I think that other women mothers were, were not broadcasting mm. either either because it actually takes quite a lot of effort to broadcast you expose yourself to judgment and you mm. also enforce the association with being a mother which I don't I don't know how that works with your brand I uh, you know people had ideas about like you could do like mom and mom influencer stuff I was like <laughs> I already have a job thank you though <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah in some ways I was right in that um some changes had to be made and in other ways I was wrong um one of the things that really came in uh strong mm. was wait if like I'm a believer in certain things um and the concept that we 
sort of come down to the earth through the gateway of women's anatomy um, to to come here and do some stuff. Uh, I believe that. And I was like, all right, well, maybe this baby is ready for what I can provide. I can provide an environment of a mother fulfilling her purpose through her work. I can show my child that. Mm. That might that might be pretty good, actually. If we have to juggle it all together, maybe the result mm. will be that although I'm not I'm not the helicopter mom, I'm not the always there mom, I'm gonna be the fulfilled mom and the one that can be like, you know, there's opportunities out there that are not what you're gonna learn at school. Um, there'll be a balance, you know. And I think it's, you know, you always want to give something that you're, you didn't get when you were a kid. And my mom was a single mom and she didn't have the means to follow like a vibrant career of her choosing. She made money to live off. Um, and I saw that lack yeah. of fulfillment and you're always making that choice of like, um, do I fill my child with my essence of, of, of presence and, or do I sub sub out and have somebody else yeah. sub in? Mm. Um, and those are, those are important. And, and are you still kind of figuring that out? Does it change? What, what does it look like for you now? They're not, sorry, they're not just decisions based yeah. on money. They, they are decisions where you can't have the choice unless you have the money, but then after you have the money, you still have to make mm. that decision choice choices choices so having that thing at the back of my mind of like me and my husband agree that it's important for my child to see me have a career not a a hobby we're not we're not bringing it down to hobby level it's full it's a full career of doing the thing um and it's good. It's 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 of benefit. Mm. It's not just um, taking away from her. It's part of her mm. enrichment. Mm. Otherwise, it doesn't work. You kind of it kind of falls falls loose. You, so you have to have some kind of fundamental beliefs about what you do. Yeah. So uh, and like it's when, because um, I I always I often think about this stuff like living a life that's in line with my values, and it feels like that's something you're kind of speaking about right now right like music and you know making music is is something you value um is yeah like do you want to talk more about that like what is it about the music making music that that gives you this like life force and like you know yeah like what what will your daughter see in you that come that through the music that I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I, I feel like this is a really abstract question, <laughs> but I hope I hope it's making sense. It's it's abstract, but I think that most creatives will be able to answer that question very easily, um, and it will be a non-verbal answer most probably. You know, music is one of those art forms that isn't sort of based on the kind of linguistic semantic form of justification it's um you know because that question doesn't just come up when you're when you have a child that question has followed me since the dawn of this Mm. idea why doing music why doing music but why are you doing it though well, like, do you really need to do it though? Because <laughs> it's a nightmare. Like, it, music is a nightmare every step of the way. Like, for example, the first year, 10 years <laughs> of working in music without being paid. That's a nightmare. And you mm. ask yourself, mm. why am I doing this? You know what I did? I stopped asking myself that question. Mm. And I'm, so I'm not going to answer it now. I stopped yeah. asking myself that question so long ago and it's one of the greatest things I've ever done. Or the answer to mm. it is yes. 
<laughs> why do you do music yes I know. <laughs> I know I feel like for me it was like I, I don't know I wouldn't because I I went through a period recently with um when after I had had Jeannie and I was like okay I can't do music I can't I can't do this anymore it's not for me but then I had this like epiphany where I was I realized like this this is something I has been inside me for so many years and I had repressed it like this desire to create this desire to like um perform and like all of this stuff and yeah it it, it kind of is a non-verbal thing as you were saying like I was just like okay this just f sits with me in a way that nothing else does it's really nice to hear both of you speaking like this because I feel like I'm very much asking myself this question like daily at the moment because I feel yeah. so yeah. overwhelmed <laughs> with being a parent and what comes with it I'm like do I have mm. space for that but every time I kind of ask that it's like yes of course you do it's like the only thing like you said that actually sits with you and and makes you feel connected yeah. to life <laughs> as well as being a parent but you know like um yeah it's, it's nice to hear so thank you for saying that <laughs> yes the answer is yes I mean and you, you know you you have different things in your toolkit uh as a person um as a person I have a penchant for analysis and um so yesterday for example because let me tell you something I am exhausted <laughs> I am <laughs> recovering I from <laughs> one of the extremely regular colds that I get as soon as I overexert myself, which could be just one weekend of work with a day of motherhood mm. latched on to either end of that. Um, and I'm not through the woods. I'm, I do not have this on lock. I get to a point every year where I'm like, it's over. All of you get out. <laughs> Just get out. <laughs> I'm not doing, I really am not. <laughs> I, it, it kind of rumbles. It's like a slow rumble. And then I just have to go to bed. <laughs> like, um, mm. I have to say that once, once Amaya turned up, the yearly holiday without her has been like the most essential thing the reset like I go down to like ground yeah. zero like I'm an amoeba like speaking is is like you can ask me if what I want for lunch and do I want it now or later <laughs> but you, you can't talk to me about anything else and, this and sounds I, amazing. I basically have like a nervous <laughs> breakdown on holidays <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's not one of those ones where I'm like, Woo, let's go. I think, I think that's home. so valid. I'm like, let's go to bed for yeah. at least two weeks now. No, it's, mm. it's only other week. It's it's a week. There's like, and there's, it, you, you, you kind of go through um, so many testing phases. How long can you be away from your child? How long can your child be away from you? That's so dependent on the support system you have around you um but it's also about the pain <laughs> it's about the pain in your chest that grows e with each day um I can do I can do like four days and I can that's kind of impressive like, that's good yeah I can I can kind of slightly forget that I'm also a mum and get into work mode um mm. after that it starts to be like mm. I've done two weeks mm. I've done a two weeks thing maybe wow. it, it was How possibly did... even three weeks and I nearly I nearly had a wow. full on melt like full on nervous breakdown yeah. and I was in I was in Paris they that's hard in yeah and like wow. yeah was that um touring or what were you doing in Paris yeah. that music writing yeah mm -hmm. um yeah so I'm hard. not I'm never gonna do that again I've crossed that off the list mm. now when it comes to touring I mean look I was talking about how I analyze so yesterday I was like all right music artist what does that entail 
and there are so many different aspects to it. So you've got, you know, songwriting, performing, business and finance, uh, promotion, marketing, social media, uh, travel. I think that was most of the categories. And you have to look at how your particular business works. What is your ecosystem? Where is your income coming from and where is your outgoings? And how can some of those things shift? Having a really good analysis of your finances at the end of the year um, can be really scary, but it can also give you an insight into how your system works. Um, for example, I had a look at my finances at the couple of months ago and I realized that I am not living off my, my touring. I really am not. Like it's it's coming in at about a quarter of my my income. It was so interesting to see. I was like, so 80% of my energy goes into live performance for a quarter of my income. And that's that's interesting. So if I, for example, instead of doing some of those shows that are like highly underpaid and underrated, if I were to swap that for a writing mm. session, I know that actually that fits slightly better in my system mm. because the trickle down effect of that song that may or may not come out yeah. might actually in the long run generate more income than um, a show that didn't, didn't pay any money for the reason of being out there. Mm. I guess it's a lot of trial mm. and error with that, yeah. You know, and then I see some of my some of my peers who get to the point of having to just say like, no, this these shows are cancelled, I can't do this anymore. And I'm I'm so I'm so aware of that breaking point. Where's that breaking point for you? Don't charge right through it. Don't have to. As long as you can really work the system and it's not just the system outside the the music business creates a framework of opportunities for you as a music maker to build your business within that system but it's really mm. so up to you in how that works and what the balance of all of that is yeah so it's I guess is it about like preserving your energy for Amaya like that uh, like so if you're not exerting 80% of your energy into live and it's not bringing back what you need, like you can then give yourself over a little bit more to your daughter and your family. And is that what it's about now? No. Or has it always been about this or no, like since pre, pre having a baby or? I forgot the one other thing. One, yes, the one thing is that, you know, my, my career is good for my daughter to see me involved in. The other thing is I promised to take full responsibility of my happiness, health, and thriving. Not yeah. through the care of my child. Yeah. Which I feel is controversial in some ways. I think that the mother figure uh, traditionally is pictured as somebody who sacrifices everything for yeah. their child. Um. I'm a very, very pragmatic person. I'm like, uh, let me make good decisions. How about that? Make, it, make decisions that are good for my health. And then the times that I'm with you, we are able to be intimate because you know what it's like when you have a shred of energy left and you're like, well, mm. I just need to spend that with my child. And they're gonna, this is that, that's fulfilling the need, right? Not necessarily. If you are dragging mm. through yourself through the mud and you don't have the energy to like smile and be in a good mood with your child, you may as well just yeah. go and get happy. Hand mm -hmm. the kid over to whoever yeah. else you can find who's got a we nice were literally, I agree. Yeah. We were literally talking about this before. Because, and it definitely is a, an image of what mothers are supposed to be. And I feel like this just goes back into like the patriarchy, you know, like we're just supposed to be 
able to do everything and have a smile on your face and it's it's okay but really our mental health is very important to be able to Mm. provide for our children like I literally I think I said that to you before Sam I was like I need to keep myself alive you know to be able to keep my child alive you know um and that is and not and not even just alive it's like you you need to be like yeah no not 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 just alive (laughs) not not happy I don't think it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but like, yeah, you need, every, yeah, the, it's just such a massive, intricate thing that I don't know. Yeah. I agree. agree. I feel like, um, <laughs> yeah. It's about valuing yourself before being a child for the what you gravitated towards in life yeah. and keeping it moving in a, in a growth direction. Um, yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Before, before, I ha- I just, I had, like, my child is good. Yeah. She's good. <laughs> like, and that, that's the other thing. I was like, what am I going to be engaging in and not engaging in? I was like, you know what? I'm not doing worry. We're not doing that. We don't have time for that. I know other people feel um, like it's an unavoidable sensation to worry and that it also proves that you care and that you're aware and that you know all those kinds of positive reasons to worry I was like I actually believe that worrying is a waste of time (laughs) so I'm just not gonna do it I'm not worried about my child I'm not worried if she has enough time with me when I think about being away from her I worry about me I'm like I don't I don't like it so there's that Mm. she's fine (laughs) I get back and she's like hey did you go (laughs) hey that's don't pretend you missed me you missed me come on now she's older she's a little bit like mommy don't but she but she the weird thing is she understands music she understands what's important about it without me explaining it so I'll say like I have to go and sing to the people she's like oh, yeah. <laughs> the yeah, people need to know <laughs> I've got jobs to do babe they they need to they need to dance they need to hear it. you said that she understands what music means to you but what what does it mean to her how how does is she into interested in music is she interested in creating is she does she kind of take that from you um she sings all the time (laughs) but I have a feeling she sings from a very different place Mm. to me um she's much more physical um Mm. and she has like a much more consistent kind of energy it's not the same thing for her for her it's like just very natural but it isn't something that she goes out of her way to do if I try to take her to a music school to like learn an instrument she's like oh come on that's a bit too serious <laughs> it's not that <laughs> calm down <laughs> she's like <laughs> she's not like a protege who's like let me learn piano at four I've asked people, I'm like, so when did you? And they're like, yeah, I started at four. I'm wow. like, that's not how She's just it. expressing herself. It's like pure, pure expression. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I, I, I can't, I can't say that, like people, people will, will report back to me like, she sings all the time. She has such a beautiful voice. I'm like, I know, I know what you would do not being a musician. You probably like, really jump on that and be like come on let's go we're gonna have a we're gonna have a singer she's gonna be, <laughs> and like she's gonna she's gonna be so wow she's been superstar and I'm like I do not wish that upon my child if she shows if if she is going in that direction I'm like not till you're 18 <laughs> serious yeah yeah <laughs> I'm hoping if I just back off and just don't have any influence whatsoever she'll just gravitate towards I feel like she might be a sports person or like a, a doc, like a somebody helping, somebody like very helpful. Nice. Like she likes to help 
um, but that's good that it's 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 so just something even that though she, she has this natural talent mm. yeah I think she you, like some people do music as a hobby like have you met those people <laughs> sorry don't know <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, I'm like, wow, that's, so you just do that for like, for fun, for fun, funsies. <laughs> wow. That sounds great. I do it for business. <laughs> Whole different ball game. Such a different thing. Like, do you remember like just listening to music? I'm like, oh. It felt good. It felt <laughs> yeah. good. Music's so fun. Oh my God. <laughs> Another question, sorry, I was going to ask you was about living in LA. So you said you've been there for six or seven years now. And um, mm -hmm. I guess raising a child in LA, obviously very different from growing up in the UK. What What is it like there? Is Is the quality of life different? I kind of feel like it would be. And also something which um, I, I read, you know, growing up as a mixed race person in the UK, uh, in a, you know, white environment um was that part of your decision living somewhere else identity for me has been a big a big kind of catalyst for moving I think um I grew up in the suburbs and I was the only black person around but going to London was a short-lived fix for me um, the problem was for me is that I was very, very, very much focused on my work. So I came to London and I was, you know, no longer stared at. And I was like, wow, the best. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but I wasn't able to jump into any kind of culture that was going on in London. Um, I didn't have time. And I sort of really missed out on maybe what the opportunities for London to kind of heal my um, fish out of water wound. <laughs> uh, so I went to LA to, to heal. I think that moving city or country is like so much about the individual kind of leap of faith that you might be needing. You know, me and George didn't need the same things. And so he didn't come over here. But uh, I saw an opportunity by being joint signed to Interscope. And I was like, but Interscope is in LA. If I'm not there, how are they going to support me? Like, they're not going to, if we're, if I'm not there, like doing the thing with them, this opportunity and this window to kind of break America is just, it's going to close because one song is not it. It's like, you, you have to like, and I was right. You know, I came to America and I pushed Aluna George um, to the next kind of, evolution of of that whereas I pretty much know if I'd stayed in the UK the general kind of UK cycle um would pretty much finish what we started before it kind of got going um and I wasn't having any of that because the reason I got into music one of the things I got into music for was to have a long career mm. a long career where you you develop and you you keep providing as an, as an artist. And I was like, right, well, that's, that means America because that's their style. It's such a big country kind of like can just keep building. Whereas I feel like in England, it's a small place that people cycle through you so yeah. quickly. Um, and um, the other reason was that I could not understand race relate like the I couldn't understand what was going on with race in the UK f while being in it so I was like I've I've been to a few of these places now I've been to the suburbs been to London I've been up north um and none of it makes any sense and I feel I still feel wrong I feel like there's something something going on here that we're not talking about I think it might be racism. <laughs> People are like, ah, oh, no, 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 we're not, mm. we're very multicultural here. 
we don't see color. <laughs> so you're insane. I was like, you know what? Let me try this from a different angle, from very far away. As soon as you get to LA, because you're so far away and America's so big, you're like, I'm from an island called England. Hello. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, literally. Do you ever think about that when you're living in England? It is a tiny it's island. It's so small. <laughs> it's so small. But England thinks it's so big. <laughs> <laughs> so big. We're like, oh, the Isle of Wight is so cute. I'm like, that's, that's you yeah. <laughs> compared to the rest of the planet. Yeah. Um, And I really needed that perspective and I needed to do so, so much critical race theory to get my head around why I felt the way I did in the UK. And um, with the challenges, challenges follow you around. Challenges, where people live dictates, is dictated by economics, which runs into racism as an intersection redlining and so in every major city that I've now been to this segregation happens it's not unique to England New York or LA and uh, I've found that you have to be very 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 intentional Mm. to break that particular cycle and I can now see why my mum didn't find the kind of perfect balance between safety, ease of life, and diversity. It was really one or the other. Um, She (laughs) she put me in a school. We we actually lived in New New Jersey for a couple of years. Um, And we came back to London uh, to be with my dad for it. Didn't work. But I did go to a school like that. And like, immediately my mum had to pick me up in the day because a kid had stabbed me with a pencil and she was like okay we have to (laughs) yeah (laughs) girl you can't handle this I'm like you're right (laughs) and uh it was (laughs) but off off to the suburbs we go yeah um so now with Amaya we we've literally scoured the whole of New York and the whole of LA to find a school that is truly diverse. What you have with the school diversity rating system is one where black people are in with all the other people of color, Asian and Latin, Latinx or Latino, Latino. So when something is rated an A for diversity, it can still be one or 2% Mm. black. And that is somehow not relevant. (laughs) So, and I'm having these conversations with parents all the time where, I mean, usually white parents. Um, I wouldn't get this from a black person, but um, I'll be talking about looking for diversity, and they'll talk about such and such place. I'm like, are you talking about a place that is like 50% white and 50% Latino? They're like, (laughs) oh. (laughs) I'm like, sorry, I'll reiterate. By diversity, I mean black people. Mm. They're like, (laughs) well, I I don't know. (laughs) They're like, they, and they, I get lots of like, all the way up until that point. I'm like, oh, I know. I'm, we, we're so concerned. We're really concerned about that too. I'm like, are you? <laughs> are you really though? Yeah. How concerned are you? Are you just concerned for this conversation? Like, like to be truly concerned, like the amount of work that my husband has done to research and find a school that it has black people in it and good grades and isn't like a choice of like, um, okay, would you like, if you, if you want to be around black people, then you can have this very, very low rated yeah. school. Like, hmm. Why? I want both. Can I have both? They're like, <laughs> you're going to have to search the earth. <laughs> like, so he did that because he, he is a master researcher and we have found 
the fourth most diverse school in California. Wow. It took a year, a full year to find that. Whoa. Of research? Yes. Oh my God. Wow. That's insane. And we had to move. Once we found it, it took so long because we were going to move to New York. Yeah. And even the, even then, you you think, oh, you know, New York is so multicultural. Ah, mm. Not in the school system. There was one mm. school in Brooklyn. What? One school? We were like, okay, we're going to have to bribe somebody to like use their Crazy. address to, to get into the school. Um. And so I was like, I didn't know that this desire of mine would require so much like putting my foot down. I had to like, Mm. you know, as he faltered and was like, babe, I can't, (laughs) I can't find it. I'm like, you don't care enough as much as me then. You will find it. (laughs) He's like, yes, I do. (laughs) He'll do one more sweep. (laughs) Yeah. And then we had to move. Like we had two weeks. Sorry, that was probably really loud. We had two weeks and we had to move across the whole, let's uproot ourselves and just find a new house, move wow. in, get that address so that we could apply. That's so crazy because I thought that. So people don't realize yeah, like. Moving to America. Multiracial couples. Yeah, yeah. Are no, have no idea what they're getting themselves into in that sense. It's like you can, you can have your little bubble, but when you have a kid, your bubble bursts. Yes. And you're out in the real world where people don't mix. Mm. They only mix on the tube, on public transport, at work. And I have met some people who are like, oh, that's so weird because I grew up in a really diverse school. And I'm like, okay, well, that's that's what I'm also going to deal with is my child. Now that I've found this utopia where... All of the people are a melting pot. She's going to go out in the world and be like, why is everyone so worried about racism? We're all together, right? (laughs) I'll explain that a little bit further. My daughter, uh, my husband is white, Jewish. And so my daughter came out white passing. She's blonde with blue eyes um, and very, very pale skin. So it's going to be an interesting job um, helping her to navigate the ideal world that I have created around her with the reality, Mm. which sounds really good fun. I mean, yay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's, I mean, very similarly, I'm the same. My husband is white and my son is, he's got bright green eyes and he's got very fair hair. So, and it's also a funny one. I mean, I'm sure you found this walking around with your child and people are like, are they? related uh, is that mom or is that <laughs> nanny like the looks i no, get you know what i get <laughs> i get reinforcement oh lovely people are like oh my gosh she looks so much like you <laughs> i'm like <laughs> i'm sure she does i'm sure she really does <laughs> isn't it funny dna is like so <laughs> weird like that <laughs> you know why i'm her mom <laughs> <laughs> funny like People don't understand that the things that come out of their mouth may be so valid, but that they are unusual to say. Like, I have never gone up to any other parent and said that their child looks like them. I may have observed it and been fully uninterested. (laughs) Like, well, that's because that's that person's child. Mm. Yeah. So the weird, the the moment that people utter something, like, you know that that's like a real surge of energy. Yeah. It's like, wow, that really surprised you, didn't it? Mm. You are blown away. Yeah. You can't believe that my child looks like me. <laughs> or they'll do, <laughs> they'll go, she looks like both of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. I, it, it's, it's... Equally, equally though, because because um 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 uh it's so it's it's also a hard one like I, know, I, I really hope that and my hasn't experienced it yet but I recently had someone say to me when I was with my son they were like oh he's oh he's pale he's very pale and I was like 
uh, and then they were like, but it, then they went, can you imagine? They went, it's probably, probably better for them though. That's what they said to me in front of my son. And I was like, no, I don't think that at all. And I was like, wow, this is the first. He's not even able to speak. He's not even able to walk. And he's already experiencing mm-hmm. racism in such a direct way. Like, that's going to be an interesting journey for him in his life now. And it's something which I've experienced, but very mm-hmm. differently. But to be, you know, white passing it is yeah. a, it's, yeah, it's just, I don't know, I don't even know what to say on that. That's just my experience. And I, I'm still going, what the, do I do, you know? You say, how dare you? Yeah, no, I was, I was very how angry. Dare you. <laughs> I was very angry. <laughs> you shut them. <laughs> Yeah. I have mm. had I had that in the back of my mind um, for the first two years, which was like because the compliments. Yeah. Oh my goodness, uh, this is the other thing. Not only is like she, you don't look like you. It's like, oh my god, she's so beautiful. I'm like, I know why you think that. Mm. You don't. You think you're being objective, but you love how blonde and blue eyed she is. Mm. You absolutely love that in the most white supremacy way possible. Yeah. And that's just going to be so interesting. And like, take that Mm. enthusiasm and just go and tell any black child how beautiful they are. 100%. Just just turn your Mm. ass around. Off you go. Yeah. Don't expect me to give mm. you a clap for telling me that my child is beautiful. You shallow door. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> like, who's going around? Oh, your child is so, so beautiful. Look at her. I'm like, don't look at my child. Get your eyes off. <laughs> it does. You you do feel that. She I feel that is... territorial. Well, not territorial, you know, protective parent you know just want to fight everyone no we're not going to be able to do it though (laughs) i do think i i at some point i'd like to talk to my own family yeah um about how they've managed to live their lives as half black half white but white passing Mm. um i've asked a, a couple little questions but i don't get much of an answer like I don't think there's enough dialogue. And this is the reason why I needed to like just get out of England. Because the lack of dialogue was making it very, very hard for me to reach any next level of understanding. Mm. Um, Because I would get a lot of pushback and conversations. And um, I do understand it now. I do understand why. And I'm much more patient with it. But in my transition of like, why aren't you all talking about it? I, I was just like, you know, I was so enraged. Um, but now I get it. I get it. I, you know, I can go into, you know, the history, but like, there's no need. We can do that another time. But yeah, it's like, um, yeah, it's another layer having a multiracial yeah. child. It's another layer. <laughs> Sure. there's many layers to this whole thing because yeah. i'm dealing with my own experience as a as a black woman in dance music yeah you know that was a whole education thing to start with and now i feel like i'm really behind like my daughter said the other day she's like mommy gracie is brown like you and i am white like daddy i was like <laughs> 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 I was like, this is a statement. I was like, it, she gave you a statement. Say say something like yes. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> yes. And I was like, yes. And then say something else. Oh. And isn't it great that everyone's skin colour is amazing? <laughs> um uh, we all have different skin colours. <laughs> and it's a song (laughs) good night (laughs) oh no she's just started with that stuff um the observation stuff like 
She called someone <laughs> fat without malice. And I was like, she's being observant. She's being observant. <laughs> <laughs> some people have different bodies you know if uh, would you like an alternative way to 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 talk about bodies if you could say um i have a body and you have a body like, would you like to try saying that she was like yeah, but she's fat. I was like, mm -hmm, okay. <laughs> That's four. That's, That's going, four years old. <laughs> I'm going, well, you know, today people can own that word themselves, um, for themselves. And But if you were to say that in a mean way, then that's not okay. She's like, I'm like I didn't go there because I was like, that's, I'm going to lose her completely. I, yeah, I failed on that one. I was like, wow, the, the, I'm going to have to have these these conversations that I can't have even with adults. So that'll be fun. <laughs> but potentially they'll be more receptive to those conversations than they can be with adults, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, yeah, hoping, I'm hoping uh, if I just don't like binary anything yeah. right now, that should help. Because we live in such a binary world already that maybe a head start in like non-binary thinking, open thinking, critical thinking might uh, might be better than like having answers you know what I mean because mm -hmm. I can't stand by any answers mm -hmm. these days it's very difficult <laughs> I agree I agree I was gonna say um, it's it's oh. I have to go very shortly because my small person is needing my boobs <laughs> I'm breastfeeding, probably I could say, you know. But... I like the way you said it. Yeah, I really like <laughs> That's what it is, you know? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. they want your boobs and you want your boobs back. Oh my God. But as soon as Yeah, possible. but they, they won't ever come back. They're gone forever, you know? That's. That's also a reality I'm, I'm having to come to terms with. And they've been drunk. Oh, <laughs> yeah. They, 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 you've been eaten up. They're gone. But it's fine. They, they've done their job. Great. Great, great job. Well, one thing I did notice <laughs> with the boobs thing is that everyone was different. Yeah. Because I had an assumption. Uh, yeah. Just for anyone else out there. The boob thing, everyone is different. That's, that's good to know. Um, yeah. What, your boobs can go, your boobs can't go. It, they just, whatever happens, happens, I guess. Everybody's bodies are different. <laughs> yeah, I could theorise. <laughs> yeah. I could theorise, but I, it didn't, That's that theory fell, fell flat with me and my friend who both started off with no boobs um, and I couldn't produce enough milk I had to give my daughter someone else's milk in a wow. frenzied evening one time I was like bring me the milk <laughs> um uh and so maybe that's why my boobs stayed a bit who knows maybe whereas my friend produced so much milk mm. um and then her boobs went back to her original size oh and she's gonna mm. do She's going to do some surgery, some like lifty stuff. Make them and up there again. The, the doctors were like, <laughs> we can do it. We can do it so that uh, you can still breastfeed if you have another child and we can do it. So wow. It's not invasive or anything. Advanced. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. What's the number? And... <laughs> And you can also, you can have a baby without tearing. I just want that to be going. I just, those are my biggest fears. Those are my biggest fears. And uh, I was like, it can happen and it also cannot happen. Just so everyone knows Well, this that. is it. I feel like it's like every... No, one, no <laughs> one's birthing experience is the same. No one's is the same and everyone's bodies are different. <laughs> but it's it's good to hear. Everybody's bodies are different. <laughs> different and it's all beautiful and wonderful. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Not all babies know how to latch. Not all babies take bottles. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> Not all dads are useless. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> Not all grandmas Absolutely. are great. Oh, no. <laughs> reality, like. Well, some of them are great. <laughs> <laughs> On the whole, though, best friends and friends without children don't know what to do with your child. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely didn't sign up for anything, and that's some of the funniest stuff. Is like, like the, 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 the constant, like, you coming out like oh well i just want to say thank you so much for speaking to us and yeah. so candidly and just yeah telling us a bit about yourself and your journey and it's been really again i love i love doing this because it genuinely does feel like therapy hopefully for you guys too but for me definitely it feels like it it genuinely does for me too so yeah thank you so so much <laughs>